Good morning. So uh, I'm going to talk about this heat stress tolerant maze for Asia. It's, uh, it's a new project. It started last year. Uh, it's actually a, a, a alliance mode. Uh, we, we started this project at the, right at the beginning at the formal sharing stage where partners are putting a lot of uh, you know, significant amount of resources, not only in kind, but in cash and in terms of uh, other resources, like uh, we are leveraging the DH facility of Pioneer. So, and that gives a lot of sense of ownership right at the beginning of the project. Uh, and the project is dealing with the very important and very unique kind of trait, which was not there before. And uh, to my knowledge, at least in tropical world, there is no you know, known breeding program focusing on heat stress tolerant maize, except a little bit in Pakistan. <coughs> and this interesting study from Indian Meteorological Department, which clearly indicates the importance of this project, which says that significant departure from the average during last uh, decade. So uh, that's where uh, uh, the project is placed there. And uh, certainly, apart from other climate change effects, heat stress is an important trait and uh, somehow, I mean, maize is figuring uh, as a top among the three cereals affected by uh, this climate change effects. Not because that maize is most sensitive, but because it's grown around the year. And it, it is uh, uh, grown uh, uh, as good as three crops in a, in a year. So that's how it, it gets more exposure. So it's prone to face more that kind of problem. So how heat stress is affecting in maize, maize in Asian tropics? And first is uh, this intensive cereal system, where we are talking about three season. And this summer maize, or spring maize, is, is emerged as a niche crop, as a third crop. But uh, for sure, it is going to be exposed to heat stress. And climate change effects, of, of course, maize, large part of maize is grown in rainy season. But mid-season, uh, heat plus drought is, is a emerging phenomenon. So this project we launched formally uh, last year, January, uh, uh, with the partnership with four uh, seed companies and national program in the region. These are the partners, uh, national program for all major four countries in South Asia, including NMRP, uh, Nepal, uh, MMRI Pakistan, and two universities from uh, India, and Bari Bangladesh. And seed companies, Pioneer, Kaveri Seed, Ajit Seed. So you have, uh, you know, multinational, regional, and local seed company, and international partners, including Purdue University. The specific objective, uh, since this is a new trade for us in CIMIT, even we never work on heat stress, so we have to be targeted to dissect expression of heat stress, and this objective is mainly led by Purdue. Uh, part of the responsibility is with us. The second objective is identify and validate favorable alleles, where we are uh, banking upon uh, genome-wide association studies and implementation uh, marker application using rapid cycle genomic selection. And of course, the important part is deployment, where we are not uh, taking mu much lead on that by ourselves, but seed companies and national programs are working on this. And the important component is strength and capacity of the alliance partner, uh, including training, capacity building, and uh, studentship. Uh, our GIS uh, group did some recent study where we, they, they looked at the recent climatic pattern and uh, from 2000 to 2011. So this is the spring season. And if you see this uh, critical crop stage, <coughs> late vegetative flowering or flowering grain filling, uh, it, is, it is happening around all the time around 40 degrees. And it, this is for sure in, in, in the spring season. So this is a assured heat stress prune environment, but it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a season where you don't have too much crops, so a lot of competition is out there, and people are pushing maize in this environment because of demand. The, the second, which is major maize growing season, rainy season, 80% maize is rain fit, grown in rainy season. And this is so-called normal year data, where you know even in normal year, the, the temperature uh, during the critical period, like flowering during this August, uh, is operating at the maximum limit, 35, 40, in most of the most part of the South Asia. And when it comes to drought year, it is compound effect of drought and heat. 
and uh, this is again critical period for flowering. So now it's from drought year, it is kind of warm drought year. And uh, this study shows that what is the pattern is expected uh, projected change in mean temperature. So it sounds like, you know, from uh, in almost all part of the South Asia, there is a uh, projected increase by one to two degree. And this one to two degree is going to cost a lot in terms of water requirement. Uh, uh, the, uh, the projection is up to 10%. And relationship of heat with, uh, you know, uh, maize. Uh, this is a famous study by Lobel et al. Uh, indicating that any d uh, increase above 30 degree, any one degree increase is going to cost a significant uh, penalty on yield. And under drought, it, it is more like 1.7%. <coughs> and in terms of, uh, and they say that if there is a two degree increase, it's as good as 20% decrease in precipitation which is a, a strong statement. So we are banking upon this uh, you know, upstream, but certainly we are keeping a good integration, GWAS, we are using for marker discovery, RCGS, rapid cycle genomic selection for marker application, high throughput phenotyping, root phenotyping, lipidomics, and double haploid. Uh, because we are leveraging on these uh, ad advances in genomics and phenotyping, which has really redefining the you know, maize breeding space. Uh, uh, fast track breeding program, we are, everybody is talking about single cross hybrids. So a little bit about how we are working in this. For this, uh, for association, uh, for GWAS study, we constituted this association mapping panel where you can see the line from Cimitasia, lines from DTMA, some of you must be knowing, drought trawl and maize for Africa panel. So these lines are selected, which are Asia adapted version of those uh, panel and lines from partner like MMRI Pakistan, Purdue, and a couple of seed companies are putting their lines in this panel. Uh, we are ready to test over a thousand uh, test classes and thanks to NBPGR ICARE for, for providing us you know, required export permission. Now we are ready and uh, as I got an update this morning that we are dispatching trials today to all the partners in Pakistan, Nepal, and Bangladesh. Uh, for for genomic selection, uh, we have we are we have commitment to work on four multi-parent synthetic and in wheat this is a magic population. So we are we uh, first uh, two magic populations are multi-parent synthetic. We are we have constituted on the basis of the lines we identified in CISA phase one. By the way, just for information, that the heat stress was the part of uh, CISA phase one. It, a small component, but we got some very good line out of that. So those lines are used for first uh, two population and second population is coming from uh, our own screening in this project plus uh, USID Heat Africa projects. So these are the donors and uh, Kluwinder was talking about heat and drought relation. We did some study. So the conclusion so far is all heat drought tolerant lines are not heat tolerant, but all some of those heat tolerant lines are coming from uh, this drought tolerant uh, sources. These are the phenotyping network is spread all over in South Asia, and they are selected very carefully on the basis of some uh, analysis, like last 10 year weather data, and uh, particularly temperature maximum, minimum, and VPD. And uh, for heat stress, the sites should qualify these uh, uh, criteria like uh, temperature maximum should be more than 35 during uh, flowering early grain filling and temperature minimum should be because most of the time we forget temperature minimum and uh, Craig Messner is sitting there who pioneered and championed this Bangladesh maize which was 2,000 hectare in 2000 and now 400,000 and the driver was minimum temperature uh, increase in minimum temperature so these are the sites. We have uh, sites which are called hot dry and there is hot humid sites. And actually when we looked at all these sites have 40 degree temperature, but when we looked at carefully the yield, uh, some sites have high yielding site even if all have 40 degrees. So what we found is it's all related to this red dots, which is VPD. So it's heat stress we are focusing more in terms of VPD stress rather than absolute you know, maximum temperature because it's strongly related to uh, heat distress tolerance. These are the traits. We have some understanding and learning on this. The top, this black one, we are using at all site, and this 
blue one we are doing at uh, you know core sites. So these are the three waves coming. We are here in second. Uh, right. Okay. So these are some new hybrids coming in. This is the first set of hybrid, and which is uh, you know ready for uh, large scale testing. And we have the commitment of training capacity building. We did three training, and the last one in Rampur, and we have planned next in country training in Pakistan in May. So thanks. I'll stop here. Thank you so much. To learn more about scaling and how you can contribute to this growing body of knowledge, please visit agrilinks.org slash scaling.